we are going to have a look at our intake system for our updraft carburetor. I'm going to try and do this in one take, but it might be a bit sketchy. I do have a few examples to show of the same system, just so we can get a full understanding of how our updraft carburetor actually works. So, fuel comes in this pipe here, fills up bowl number one and bowl number two. The internals operate pretty well identical to a standard carburetor system, except instead of everything going down, it goes up, hence the name updraft carburetor. Where do we get the draft from? Well, we get it from these intakes up here. It pulls in air into one of uh, these two, pulls down into our valley here, which then pulls everything up through the carburetors. These pull up into our intake manifold. So we've got one here. This will be mirrored on the other side without the uh, additional accessories up the top here. The reason we've actually pulled this one apart is because we found a crack at this end of one of our intake manifolds. And unfortunately, to disassemble it, you need to take both of them off. So this is the one we're going to be using, and this is just a spare we have lying around. It does have a four-barrel setup, complete with accelerator. The bell crank in the middle makes sure, makes sure, sorry, all four operate at the same time. There is also a choke, which is this lever here, which you can hear operating on the inside here. Now, the biggest problem with an updraft carburetor is, of course, how many turns everything needs to take. So, traditional uh, engine would pull the air in, pulls it down. We then have an immediate right angle turn to both carburetor systems and then back up into our intake manifold. This one's upside down, which I'll flip over because we're Australian. Pulls it up into this, across and down into these faces here. Now these, flipping back up the right way now, we will head over to our engine. Over here I've prepared its twin. It is sitting up, but this is essentially, oops, this is essentially where it interfaces directly into the engine. So you can look down the bottom here. This is the valley of the engine. This is where the majority of the carburetor actually sits and is the only reason they exist, is purely a safe spacing, safe space saving measure. There we go, we got that one eventually. So it pulls it up into these ones here, up, around, and down. Keen-eyed observers would have also noticed we have an interfacing surface here and on the other side. These two obviously connect up with its twin sitting over there. And this one connects with our T-piece, which I just knocked down. This forms part of the water jacket for the entire engine system. Without it, the engine would almost definitely overheat. And unfortunately for us, that is where we found our cracks. So it's actually this piece that we are getting rid of, unfortunately. We will fix it at some point in the future, but for now, we have a spare, so we can work with that. Back over at our carburetor system, we have our Kai gas system. That's what all of this random other crap is that a few of your keen-eyed observers would have noticed. So what does the Kai gas system do? It is used for really, really, really cold climates. Now you do have to remember when these tanks were made, batteries weren't quite as good as what they are today. So the cranking power of the engine wasn't quite up to standard to be able to pull air in, go all the way around into the engine. So to get it going, additionally the way you do it is you actually dump fuel into uh, your intakes 
The problem with an updraft carburetor is we have a valley down here. So if you drop fuel into it, it goes straight into the valley rather than the carburetors. So doing that does not work. If you are running a Centurion and you're dumping fuel into the top of your intake and it catches fire, you know why. Handy little tip, there is, and I'll show it on this one, there is a drain plug on each side of the valley itself. These should be connected to some sort of pipes in the tank, which actually drop it out the bottom of the tank itself, so fuel doesn't build up in the valley. So if you do have that problem of your Centurion catching fire, that's probably why. The Kai gas system exists to mitigate that. So what it does is there's a little pump which is controlled um, on the firewall inside the tank. When you press that, or rather pump it up, it pulls fuel in around into these pipes here and they connect with the top. We'll flip back over because we're Australian into our injectors. They go directly, if I turn the light on, you can see it down there. They spray need fuel directly into the engine. You really shouldn't need it, if we're being perfectly honest, but it exists. So we hook it all up anyway. Do we ever use it? No, we just use some Aerostar uh, that works in really cold climates if you ever need to. If you have it set up correctly though, your batteries should be able to turn the engine over off enough anyway. So you shouldn't have that issue. Kai gas system is only used on updraft carburetors because you cannot pour fuel down the intakes. So there you have it. That is our updraft carburetor. Do we like it? No. I think they're rather horrendous. The only thing I like about them is they look like little boats when they're sitting up on a desk like this. Uh, they are fortunately a dying breed of carburetor. Given how many centurions are kicking around though, they aren't completely extinct. In fact, carburetors are a dying breed of carburetor. Everyone's gone to injection for the right reasons. Uh, in fact, it should be noted that you can actually get mechanical injection systems for the medial. I believe the toad flail, the Churchill with the mine sweeper on the front, actually utilizes it. Uh, naturally, of course, being that meteor is the pretty well identical version of the Merlin found in Spitfires and the like, they all use uh, mechanical injection systems anyway. So, there you have it. If you liked this, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a friendly comment down below if you so desire. If you like these sort of one-off, just me ranting, talking about a system in a freehand sort of way, by all means, let me know. If not, I can do more of the sit behind a computer and clickety-clack it out. So yeah, please have a lovely day and we'll see you next time. Bye.